Welcome to the presentation about how crowbars can be designed using rupture in hand capsule style tyristi devices, particularly targeting medium voltage driven application. Medium voltage means we're talking about AC applications. So how to build an AC crowbar, an entity that's designed to create a safe short circuit condition in order to blow a superordinate fuse or give some time for mechanical switch gear to open. It could be built using four tie resistors in a Y-connected crowbar setup. That would be sufficient to trigger short circuit currents in both directions, leading to high currents that trigger the fuses. However, four tie resistors may not be the best choice to go. And doing the same thing in a delta-connected approach allows to achieve the same using three tie resistors only. Though both are considerably okay, the delta connected one is preferred simply because for economic reasons and the lower part count. The challenge, however, particularly for the parts, is dimensioning the tie resistors. So what's the trouble? First, a simulation of the voltage source is required to get an insight how the short circuit current develops that needs to be handled and which can be expected. Doing a simulation for a medium voltage transformer, um, one can easily figure out that peak currents in the first half period exceed 10 times the rated current that the transformer is supposed to deliver. However, in medium voltage and megawatts of power, the output current of this transformer can easily exceed 5 kiloamps, which means 50 kiloamps or higher ratings for the tie resistors have to be anticipated. So dimensioning the tie resistor, because there's not a single tie resistor to do the trick, demands the analysis of a thermal situation. Handling short circuits is more pulse power than continuous power, and the only thing of interest remains the chip temperature. Taking a large scale tie resistor, it can easily be seen that even this high current only leads to 250 degree for the junction of the chip. That's perfectly fine, and in case of pulse power, where up to 350 degree are tolerable for short periods of time, this value means the design would lead to a resettable crowbar. A multi-use device, however, very often crowbars are exchanged with the fuse they trigger, which means resettability is not necessarily on top of the wish list. Economically, well, resettable means typically over-engineered, a metaphor for too expensive. Doing the same simulation with a way smaller disk device reveals that here, for the far smaller disk, the junction temperature well exceeds the 350 degree, even 450 would be exceeded. Again, it's not mandatorily a bad thing because a single use device would be replaced with a fuse it triggers anyway. So even that it makes it a single use is of lower concern. What's particularly interesting is the economic situation. And here, the smaller disk, of course, leads to lower pricing. Smaller is a nice buzzword because the third thing that needs to be considered in dimensioning is the size of the crowbar. It needs to suit the application requirements and fit into a certain cabinet. So space matters and the stack built from three of those devices has an envelope with 165 millimeters of height, 300 millimeters of overall width and 160 millimeters in depth, size of a larger shoebox. So this is the stack that holds the crowbar in Delta connection, including the terminals and building it, it became quite an impressively compact unit. Having the unit and having simulation results is one thing, testing needs to be done sooner or later. And of course, it's expected that the test most likely destroys the device. So the stack was integrated into a system and a short circuit was provoked. Uh, not to the scale, but this is the timing diagram. And it's clearly visible that there is some time delay between the short circuit in yellow being triggered and the crowbar reacting. However, the time it takes to trigger mechanical switch gear or blow classical fuses or pyro fuses is even longer. On the X scale, you can see the alpha equals zero degree. It's supposed to trigger at that particular position in the half sign because that's supposed to be the worst case. The stack has survived this test in mechanical ways. 
as expected, it was figured out that some of the tyristors after the test were electrically destroyed. But please keep in mind that the mandatory feature is to keep up a low impedance short circuit path, which the destroyed devices did, and not go into pieces, which means no case rupturing is allowed. So the tie resistors, after being tested, uh, were returned to the lab for analysis. So after successfully being tested, the question just for pure interest is, how do the devices look inside? And praying them open, you can clearly see the burn marks that uh, show the place where the tie resistor disc suffered damage and got destroyed, of course. However, uh, disassembling all the components, it was clearly shown that case rupture enhancement that was in place really did a great job. Discs like these feature short on fail, and that is often said, but here it's substantiated. So after the tie resistor got destroyed electrically, it still formed a low impedance path to keep up the short circuit current up to the moment where the fuse cleared the situation. The energy set free in that case is amazingly high. However, as you can also see, there's no damage done to the capsule's housing. So case rupturing was prevented as demanded. So this is where the magic takes place, enhancing the rupture capability of the package. And this is an exploded view to the whole device, starting from the cathode terminal and a first PTFE ring that is part of the rupture enhancement technology. There's the gate contact and the molybdenum cap for contacts. There's the classic silver shim to counteract the thermomechanic movement. There's the tie resistor die itself and a second component that contributes to the rupture enhancement. Those two rupture enhancing component surround the disc and prolong the time it takes for energy to be set free. Destructive power is energy per time, so prolonging the time reduces the re destructive power, and that keeps the anode terminal with the ceramic housing best in place without featuring any damage to the outside world. So conclusion from that, crowbars, when properly designed and dimensioned, are an excellent choice to protect equipment, particularly large-scale equipment like train stations, subway stations, or wind power plants and solar large scale, grid scale solar inverters. To protect the devices properly, it needs an in-depth knowledge of the application that is to be protected. Particularly, the driving voltage source needs to be known most accurately. And on top of that, not only having disks, but having rupture enhanced disk devices helps preventing destructive events and their consequences for the application. That said, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you for your attention. And in case you have any questions, my email is on screen. Looking forward to discussing issues like this with you at the PCIM 2023 in Nuremberg. Goodbye.